Hello and welcome back and today we want to talk about what is actually the difference between these budget NASs that go for about 100 to 200 quid and these other NASs that are like 2,000 pounds. Often the difference seems very very small and you have some 4 bay NASs that you can pick up for about 300 quid whereas you've got some other big bad boy ones that go for about a grand. So what is the difference between the budget and the fully featured NAS? Let's go! <laughs> Okay, so a number of you out there are probably buying your second, third or tenth NAS and you're wondering what is actually the difference because your budget is going to be limited and this doesn't even include what you're spending on hard drive media. Sometimes you've got maybe three to five hundred nicker, you've got a little bit of money to spend on a NAS server for home or indeed business and you see at the bottom end this really cheapy cheapy NAS like a Synology DS2 on 6SE going for about 80 to 100 pounds and it's a two bay NAS, it's got RAID and you look at it and you're thinking well that's not much money and then everyone's telling you to go for something bigger like a DS218 plus or a DS718 plus in terms of two bay and some of these go for about 400 pounds so what exactly is the difference between them because it must be hard enough trying to make a decision to buy a NAS in the first place but then when you've got a huge disparity like that it can be very intimidating now what I want to talk about today is what the difference is and more importantly help you decide whether you need to pay the extra because sometimes you'll be duped into oh you must buy this it's so future proof but if you don't need it you don't need it so first thing we want to talk about is the hardware inside because obviously the hardware inside the cheapy cheapy NAS and the more expensive NAS does differ greatly now in the context uh, often in the case of smaller NASs the CPUs you get inside is maybe a single or a dual core ARM, an ARM based CPU. Now these are cost effective CPUs and power efficient CPUs. They use much less power uh, when achieving their um, software output and they are designed to simplify strings of code that are delivered to the CPU to an instruction if you will to create a command. Now ARM CPUs because they are designed to utilize less power are predominantly found in smartphones, uh, portable applications and hardware. Now, in the case of these smaller NASs, they utilize less power and they are designed for smaller applications and therefore an ARM CPU is ideal and indeed vice versa. Because in the high-end NASs, they're going to be working a lot harder and the CPUs inside are uh, generally 64-bit uh, x86, say so Intel AMD based CPUs and these CPUs are in quad core in well over 2 gigahertz, whereas the other one barely touches 1 gigahertz generally, even in single or dual core. So one of the biggest differences between them is to do with that CPU and indeed the memory. You get more memory in the more expensive ones, and we'll talk about what that memory is for, and you get better CPUs inside. In every other way, they're actually quite similar, the cheap and the more expensive one, but those two factors always seem to make a difference, the CPU and the hardware. Now, another big difference between them is the software, both in the, the software that is supported because of the CPU inside, because certain software requires a benchmark CPU um, kind of a level that if you dip below that, the software just won't run. And on top of that, the extent to which the software runs. Now, the cheapy cheapy CPU, uh, cheapy, uh, the cheapy cheapy NASes, such as the 218J or that 216SE, um, these NASes here, these little budget NASes, or the DS115J, in fact, that's still around, these NASes, they can support the likes of, say, photo um, album viewing and multimedia, DLNA media server access, and even surveillance to a very limited degree with few cameras. But, unlike the big ones, uh, the big NASes, they can only support maybe three to five cameras. They can only really let a handful of users two or three at most access the photos and media and even then it will be pushing the device to its limits very early on 70 80 percent cpu use whereas the big boy NASes, the ones with those quad core ar uh, amd and x86 intel based cpus those ones will let 10 20 50 users access the nas at once they will give you 40 cameras they'll let you oh you know access photos music uh, they'll let you do everything including plex media server support and all of those big key things that people want to use a NAS for in the home to a greater extent or indeed at all so remember that with the budget ones you're going to have to double check which software it's supported and to what extent it can run so if you're thinking of getting a Plex uh, media server to install on a NAS and it's for your whole family how many members of the family how dense is that media from that point onwards you if it's more than two or three in any of those numbers step away 
go for something like a mid-range DS218+. Plus. Now, another area in which these two differ, a cheaper and a more expensive one, is to do with warranty support. Cheaper NAS is because they've got, I would go as far as to say, budget CPUs inside. It's worth mentioning that the warranty will be indicative of that. So if you buy a NAS that's got an, a little cheap ARM-based CPU inside and they're selling it for about 120, 150 quid, that NAS more than likely will have two years of manufacturer's warranty. That means the manufacturer will cover any hardware problems for two years. If we go to the other end of the scale, more the flagship models, the top end ones, arrive with three to five years of manufacturer's warranty. And a lot of that software and support extends into the software too. So when you buy a more expensive NAS, you're actually getting a greater extent of coverage in the event of hardware failure, something that the cheaper NASs will not give you to the same degree. So if that's something that's important to you, that's another reason to consider spending a little bit more. In terms of the future, I'm going to try to avoid the word future-proofing as much as possible. Um, we can talk about expansions. Now, the cheaper end NAS is some of them one, two bay. You can put one or two hard drives or SSDs inside, but that's going to be your lot. You might be able to install a new hard drive at a later date, but that's really it for you. The other end of the spectrum, the more expensive NAS is, can adopt something called expansions. These are devices that let you keep the drives that are inside your existing NAS and attach another expansion unit that you populate with hard drives and add to that storage array, that RAID volume. So if you've got two drives in this two bay, this more expensive two bay, and they've filled up, you can get an expansion which lets you add more drives. Some of these expansions have two, five, or eight hard drives in scale, and you can keep adding hard drives to that array and never have to delete anything. Whereas in the cheap one, you've either got to buy more hard drives or start deleting data, which is something you just don't want to do. Now, on the subject of data, we can go back to the number of users because cheap analysis do support fewer users. And that's not just in individual applications, I mean overall in the system software. So you end up with things like DSM or QTS from Synology or QNAP that will support a handful of users, five to 10 users max on that budget um, hardware. So you start creating users and download tasks and email servers and that sort of thing if you want to go a little bit more extensive. But you really do hit a glass ceiling incredibly early on if you want to go with more than about five users that are gonna have constant access whereas the more expensive units will support more users concurrently across the entire spectrum of their software, while supporting things like long-term surveillance, virtualization, email servers, and lots of ways in which all of those users can collaborate together on this one device, something the cheaper device just will not give you. Finally, power consumption. Now, this is one of the few areas where a cheaper NAS can be a lot more beneficial, because cheaper NAS is because of that ARM-based CPU, and I keep using the word cheap, cost-effective NAS is because of that CPU inside, the lower frequency of RAM and capacity of RAM, and indeed the chassis themselves being more plasticky and compact in design, because they've got none of the frills and add-ons of the more expensive one, results in two things. One, they are quieter. Two, they use less power. So your footprint, as it were, will be smaller. So if that is something that matters a lot to you, noise and power consumption, that's when you start going towards the cheaper end of the spectrum. Again, try to stay in the middle. Your DS218 Pluses, your uh, TS253Bs, these middle range NASs are the ones to look at if your budget is a bit tight. But um, not just if your budget is tight, but your power consumption and noise is a concern. If you go to the bottom end of the spectrum, the lowest powered NAS I've ever seen is the DS115J. It's all a single core 800 megahertz CPU with 256 megabytes of RAM. It is one of the weakest NASs currently available to buy, but it makes sod all noise, and it uses sod all power. So it's definitely something to bear in mind because you will utilize less power, make less noise, and if that's important to you, and you're only gonna use it as a network backup to a bigger NAS, then that's something worth considering. That little one, but it doesn't have RAID, so it's worth a look at. But thank you so much for watching. I hope I was able to help, and if you do have any questions about the right NAS to buy, do pop it down there in the comments or go to the description and find my article to the best one bay and two bay NASs of this year. Finally, do find me on Twitter if you've got a question or need some advice um, or via Twitter at Robbie on the Tube or use the free advice uh, record inquiry section on NAS Compares below. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe.